Welcome back, everyone, to the Ghost 44 Search and Destroy. It's myself, Lando, guiding you guys through the action. We're currently hopping in another series going on between World War II Champs team versus the side of Hunnit. We just witnessed a, a great last match action between Hunnit and the side of Infam Hunter T. We're in match number two. It went to round 11, and Hunnit was able to close that series out and advance them in here toward the semifinals. It goes 44 SD, like I just said. So, with that, we're happy to hear toward round at number one. Currently looking through the eyes of Nate Shot right now. Player making his way through Middle Street. That's currently going to be J Cap. Shot's coming in. It looks like it is going to be Nate Shot who wins that fight. Slack toward the backside. One on three scenario. Spots out one, but can't finish that one off. It's going to be Rallied who gets the nice jump shot after being prone and finishes off Slack in the end. So, like I said, of course, you do recognize quite a few players on both of these teams. If you didn't watch the last match, like I said, we have to talk about Nate Shot. In the uh, from the Hunnit squad, of course, prior pro, prior pro player also won a, a gold medal actually in uh, Call of Duty Ghosts, and uh, from the other side as well. When it comes down to the World War II champs team, you've got uh, T.J. Halley who uh, just recently announced that he's going to be competing on the Rise Nation roster heading into World War II. You've got Slack from LG and JCap who is uh, currently a free agent actually. Uh, it was just released off the side of Team Envious. And is a very, very well-known veteran player at that. And uh, have to use those veteran skills to try to clutch out this one on four. And unfortunately for him, only one kill is all he will be granted as he will drop in just like that. Hunnit is now up two rounds to zero. But a lot of veterans actually competing in our uh, Ghost 44 SD tournament tonight. A lot of teams trying to uh, be in preparation. A lot of players, rather. Trying to be in high preparation for, of course, Call of Duty World War II. And, uh, you know, while Ghost, a lot of people will, will complain and say, you know, Ghost isn't the closest game to uh, World War II as far as how the game does play out. It is at least a boots-on-the-ground game to kind of practice your skills and try to hone those heading into, uh, like I said, heading into World War II. So with that, looking in round number three, Farrell currently with that Thermal Remington. Peeking his way, going to spot one just coming out. So I think we, we actually got a little bit of frame rate. Not sure if he experienced that as well and quickly... Pharaoh finds two, other player dropping as well, and just like that, TJ Alley now left in a one on four. Last time it was JCap, this time it was TJ, and TJ's not able to find another kill, really any kills when it comes down to this round. Pharaoh starting off six and zero. Great start for him. Has a great line sight gained from that angle. Like I said, it's going to be now up three rounds to zero. Strong start. I feel like this game is literally just begun and we've already got three rounds in our belts we're gonna hop on board with the world war ii champs team squad could this be intel potentially not exactly sure but i'm not 100 sure uh who retrix is to be totally honest uh I'm trying to give a little bit of ideas to uh who this player is we'll see what he can try and produce of course not having the best of starts as of yet currently seeing it 0 and 3 along with slack but when you've lost the last three rounds uh not really a whole lot you can really show from it slack finally getting a, the first kill on the board for him Actually farming two kills, and it looks like, like Retrix had an opportunity to get another one. He's able to finish that one off, and just like that, player starting to dwindle. Nate Shot finding one. Finds one on J-Cap. And Slack can find this kill. This will be the hat trick holding the angle, just like that. Has a great line set there on that white truck, and uses the Remington to his advantage. Nice chest high cover, gained. This is exactly what the side of World War II... Two World War II champs team, sorry, is going to need heading into these future rounds. They're going to need players to go off, holding those positions, and and Slack finding those three obviously gave his team a huge advantage coming into this round, coming out of the round, really. So if you take a look at Hunt, it looks like they're going to be going for an offside hit, going over here toward A as one player gets quickly Matt Farrow, adding to that kill total, finds one early on TJ Halley, and TJ Halley's going to have to call that one out to his teammates, so a late push here, most likely going to come in. J kept quickly making the rotation. Or anything, Rallied ends up shutting down both Slack and JCap. Retrix finally finds a kill, spots one. Also has an opportunity to finish off this one player toward that, I was going to say, toward that back tank, and I figured that it was that it was Pharaoh. And Pharaoh does have the sniper rifle. Receives the shots. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. Pharaoh doing big things right now. Eight and one in this game. And really at the moment, it's World War II champs team who's just trying to pick up the pieces, trying to maybe develop a new strategy, how they can try to advance in this game. 
as Retrick started to go for the early peak and might have spotted a player making his way over into 10. Not exactly sure if he gained that information or not, but regardless, he spots one player on the flank. Blast full drop, so that trade for TJ Halley being a part of that first blood is going to now equal out into their own man count advantage. Farrell still holding that angle toward back tank. Tosses out a stun and kills are actually going to go his favor. Nate Shot ends up finding one with that vector. And peeking back up. Is Pharaoh not going to spot him? Pulls up the pistol, spots one to his left, and is he ready for this player? Slight holding that angle up and that Remington. And Nate Shot's going to be here for the flank. Should be able to pick this one up very, very quickly and does exactly that. Great two on one play there from Nate Shot. Watches both of those angles. Gains the information from Pharaoh, who has that snipe rifle toward back tank. Nate Shot's ready for. Slack's exit as he will exit not only the building but as well as the round. It is currently five rounds to one. Just complete dominance so far in this Warhawk. This Pharaoh has definitely been the highlight man up to this point as, Bla as Blastful gets made for that first blood. Currently sitting at 10 and 1 in this match. Tosses out the nade. Can't actually get that one off in time. So Retrix finding a few kills there. Rinaldi trying to do some damage with that sniper rifle. Nice shot there on J-Cap. He's going to need to find three more. They'll put it up close. Can he find that one? The shot does go off, but unfortunately for him, it's not going to be quick enough as Slacked will be ready and waiting there. Remington pulls it out at the right time, of course, at due to gaining the information from his teammates and shuts down Rallied in the end. As uh, not... not uh, Normal characteristics actually coming in from TJ Halley. Currently sitting at 1 and 6 at the moment. As it looks like uh, JCAP right now with that bomb in hand. Sniper rifle shots being echoed throughout the map right now. It looks like Rally actually finding one as that player rounds the corner. Shuts down JCAP. Pharaoh as well. So double sniper rifles here on defense at B. Just as I start to credit them, TJ Halley making a somewhat of an impact and looks like Farrell will be shut down as well. TJ doing a great job at shutting down both of those sniper rifles with that vector. Finds one to the right and realizes that the remaining player sitting inside of 10 shuts him down as this map number one isn't over just yet. Two rounds away from a tie right now with the side of World War II champs team. It looks like they will be on defense. Curious to see what kind of checks they make. Looks like they're going to have two players rotate here over toward A, which is the most characteristic, thinking that an offside hit could definitely be one that could be likely. Fair toward the back, going to toss out that stun while he is here. This could definitely make the other two players on B think about making that rotation over because we have seen that offside hit come in already from the side of Huddit. And that's the thing when you make an offside hit when it comes down to Call of Duty on a certain map that always puts in the back of the mind of your enemies that, hey, they can always make that offside hit. They're risky to do it once, and they most likely are risky enough to do it again. As J-Cap will drop, I apologize about the camera there. I was trying to get on board with J-Cap as quick as I could, but he will also drop in the end. Rally finishing things off. And he's in the right place. Finishing off J-Cap up close. And we'll close this one out as we will only see ourselves toward a round at number nine. Like I said, it's going to be Hunnett, who is now up one game to zero. So only one map away right now with the side of Hunnett for making their way already into the finals. Welcome back, everyone, to the Ghost 4v4 S&D only. We're currently in the semifinals of this match. Currently looking through the eyes of Nate Shot here for the moment. As we end up seeing a 6-3 to three victory for the side of Hunnett. As we do continue our battle between quite a few veterans, actually. As kills starting to happen, two players already down right now for the side of Hunnett and Blastful. Gonna have to try to make up a lot of that deficit and unfortunately he's not able to stay alive for much longer. So the kills come in, TJ Halley finds the last one and along with the two kills earned, he will also be able to find that diffuse here at the end. So Slacked finds some excess shots, just uh, you know, the glass is very bulletproof. Thankfully he's able to find that one. So a much needed, um, I would say much needed overall morale, I think it's fair to say for the side uh, World War II champs team, of course, end up losing that last match. They're coming into the semifinals, and uh, you know they kind of come into it. And they pretty much get smacked. They, they 
it was easily a one that could have gone 6-2, 6-1. Just a few gunfights ended up going in World War II champ's favor, uh, where, you know, it really could have gone to Harnett each and every time. So with that, a round, early round under the belt, has to feel pretty good, at least for now. We'll see if they can try to respond to that one yet again. So just like that, kills being traded toward top control. And now Nate Shots left all by himself, able to find at least one. But two more left would be a one on three clutch. Unfortunately for him, he's not able to stay alive for much longer. So TJ Halley sitting at three and one, slacked, sitting at three and oh, yet to die. And JCAP's just happy, man. He has, he has no issue. He doesn't have to get kills. He doesn't have to get kills. As long as he can carry the bomb and not die, that's all he has to do. Must be a nice roll. Nice life there for JCAP. JCAP, two rings, of course. Experienced veteran player. And uh, recently announced a free agency, actually, from the side of Team Envia. So currently looking for a team. And obviously trying to prepare for World War II and playing some uh, some quality ghosts. So with that, looking at this round, Slack currently watching underground at the moment to make sure that flank isn't one that could be likely or maybe some pushes in toward middle map. And him watching the flank could actually turn into him making his own flank as Pharaoh ends up finding the first blood. So a man disadvantage, Slack. Needs to do somewhat of a little bit of damage, but his teammates need to stay alive is a thing. Already firing some bullets, only hit markers. He's at the end. Looks like uh, TJ Howley ended up dropping as well, and I think we're going to see in the final kill cam rally. Rocking the shoddy out here. Makes his way into map room. And fires a nice shotgun shell into that remaining player's chest. And that's now going to be a round finally actually on the board for the side of Hunnett. I say finally, it's only been three rounds. But regardless, able to get that round of the board. It looks like uh, Nate Shot now going to be taking a page, or excuse me, TJ Howley going to be taking a page there out of Rally's book. Says, uh, you know what, you guys are going to use shotties. I'll use shotties too. And it actually gets stunned here. Can't move his ADS far enough away to pick off Blastful, so that shotgun is going to have to be put away for now. And I'm actually going to switch on board with Rally. What does he have in hand? It looks like he does have the vector, so. Swaps back. That SMG. JCAP shutting down Nate Shot. Three on three now. And it looks like Pharaoh has pulled out the shoddy. So I didn't even realize that Pharaoh has swapped to the shoddy in his own case. Retrix ends up dropping. Rally will find him. So Matt to back rounds now. Gain for the side of Harnet. And those shotguns have definitely come out to play, like I said. We end up seeing Rally do some damage with the last one. And Pharaoh doing it as well. And heading into this round number five, I'm curious to see. If we continue, continue to see the shoddy strategy be pulled out here, because when it comes down uh, when it comes down to this B site, it's a lot of close quarter engagements. So you're not going to see too many Remingtons really lingering around that area. So we're going to look through everyone's perspective right now. Looks like uh, pretty much vectors for the other side. I saw one shoddy there from Rallied again, and that's exactly why shuts down Retrix for the first blood, causing a lot of damage on the World War II champs lineup. It looks like Slack to JCAP both doing damage right now when it comes down to top control. That bomb has been dropped, and Pharaoh just rounds the corner. Unfortunate timing there from him. As Nate Shot evens this one out to a two on two. And just as that happens, both TJ and Slack finding kills at the exact same time. As they'll finally get their lead back. No longer tied or had a deficit compared to that last match, so gaining the lead here. As a nice starts for both TJ, Halley, and Slack. TJ sitting at 5 and 3. Slack is currently sitting at 5 and 2. And I got to keep checking the shoddy strategy, man. Is it still coming out? Looks like straight vectors for the World War II champ side. I think that's, uh, yeah, it's a vector from it, Nade. Rallied as well. Pharaoh, the only one with that shoddy in hand, is not going to have a whole lot of action toward B for the moment. However, Rallied on the other case. Him and Nade shot trying to hold down this A site. That call, that two man defensive hold right now. Carefully getting some information, but where's the bomb right now? Looks like bomb is going to be in a pretty high up position. As TJ finds that one player toward that backside right now. It's going to be Blastful taking some shots, has to back up, so him and Pharaoh. Going to have to turn to clutch this two on four, and Pharaoh has that shoddy in hand. Receiving some shots, as it looks like uh, Rally ended up just dying there, so Pharaoh now. A shot in a dream. A one-on-four scenario. Thankfully, he is on defense, but that bomb most likely will be going down shortly. And the shoddy not able to do much damage there as JCAT makes him pay. Coming down those stairs. Had an idea of to where the line site was at. And, of course, JCAT's going to be here. So, 
Shardy strategy, some, you know, minor little, uh, I guess you should say strategies, kind of coming in from the side of Hunnet. That's definitely guaranteed them those two rounds that they have won. But since then, the set of World War II champs team has used their overall gun skill. Of course, their uh, smart plays, their tactics as well to kind of advance them so far and having the two-round advantage at the moment. And it looks like Sniper now out for Rallied, watching through mid. Not going to spawn anyone for the time being. All four players for the side of World War II champs team focusing toward that B site. Is it wouldn't be a bad idea if we want to make that rotation. As they make the rotation, TJ Halley ends up finding Rallied along the way. And Nate Shot's going to be on the flank. Knows TJ's going to be around this position. Tries to pre-fire. Who's going to win this gunfight? Nate Shot wins that one. Big gunfight in his favor. And it looks like Nate Shot drops. Pharaoh drops at the exact same time. And Slacked and J-Cap able to clean up those two. Going to go and give the defuse here towards Slacked. Slacked having a great game. 8-2 and two at the moment. As both J-Cap and Retrix will uh, run, throughout the th run throughout the map. In their good fortune. And they're not going to be up five rounds to two. So this is something that we saw actually in our very, very first series of the night between uh, West Coast Love and YRN. We end up seeing a dominant victory in round number one from one side. In round number two, we end up seeing a dominant victory from the other side. And that's exactly what we could be seeing in this same match. And in that series that I just talked about, our first one, map three, ended up, we end up seeing a round 11. So, uh... Definitely could be seeing uh, similar tales potentially between these two teams. Like I said, winner does advance to the finals for tonight's 44 s and And it looks like kills are already being exchanged. Blastfall, Retrix finding two on the other side. Definitely being a, a big performer after a slower start. Spots a third player, and there's the hat trick. He wants the ace, though, and Rally. He's the only man standing alive, and it looks like he will be dropped in the end as well. TJ will be able to make slight work of him. And just like that, that's going to be game number two in the books. So Hunnet taking map number one, six rounds to three. And map number two, this one goes the way of World War II champs team. So I'm not going to lie. I was I, Every time that I feel like I make a prediction, it just it totally goes out the window. I'm thinking, okay, another dominant victory from a team. Most likely heading into map number two. I really, I really honestly think that Warhawk plays a little bit similar towards Sovereign than like a much different, like an Octane or something like that. But still, I don't, I don't even know what to really to expect anymore. Regardless, World War II champs team walks away with the victory after having a, a pretty big performance coming in from Slack. Finishes that one eight and two. TJ Halley finishes eight and four. Welcome back, and also boys and girls. It's the Ghost 4 v four search and destroy only. We're currently in map number three of our semifinal, our first semifinal of the night, currently going on between World War II champs team and Hunnets. Loading into round at number one. It looks like we're gonna have a little bit of a restart here. Of course, no problem there. Gonna see what the, exactly the issues are and get those solved for you guys. But of course, we can kind of talk about, kind of dwell on what exactly we have seen so far in this entire series. Because of course, we do have a number of different known players. We've got, uh, so we've got Nate Shop, we've got Jcap, we've got Slash. Of course, we've got TJ Halley as well. A number of different pro players in this match. Of course, mixed up of, amongst the uh, the two teams that we end up having. Uh, but Matt number one, we end up seeing a search and destroy on Warhawk. Uh, we end up seeing that one go six rounds to three in Hunnet's favor. And in our very last match, of course, we end up seeing Search and Destroy Sovereign. Uh, that one ended up going six to two in favor of World War II Champs team. So like I said, we've seen actually in our first series, which I was talking about before we headed to a commercial break, a very similar scoreline. And uh, in that particular series, mat number three, ended up going to round 11. So I'm not exactly sure what to expect when it comes down to this mat number three. Uh, I'm curious to see what you guys' predictions are when it comes down to this one, because I really don't know how to call it. Uh, to be totally honest with you, uh, just because of the fact that we have seen pretty down performance from either side. So it's kind of difficult to call. Uh, I'm curious to see, though, when it comes down toward the side of Hunnet. I've seen moments where Pharaoh has had major performances, and when he hasn't had major performances, when he's kind of been average or kind of lacking, and when I've seen those matches happen, that's when the team starts to have a little bit of issues. I think I remember him playing, because he didn't actually play uh, with the side of Hunnet for last week's um, search and destroy tournament. I, I don't remember exactly what team he played with, um, but I know Felony was in place of Hunnett's team, and they ended up getting knocked out in around the third through fourth place uh, spot. But I remember ended up saying whenever Farrell was going off, and the team was just succeeding. So I'm really looking as as far as the Hunnett side of things. I think if Farrell honestly can have a big performance, I fully expect them to most likely take uh, this freight search and destroy and advance themselves into the finals because uh, this team is definitely one that you like to favor uh, when it comes down. 
uh, to those last few matches. Uh, when it comes to the side of World War II champs team, honestly, it's, it's kind of hard to call. Uh, Retrix has been having, a, didn't have the best map one, but kind of turned things up in map number two. But like I said, it's kind of hard to call when we haven't really been able to see this team play too much. So when it comes to the side of World War II champs team, it's kind of up in the air. I think you're going to need to see a pretty overall consistent performance from most guys. But uh, if there is one guy who should be going off, I think it's fair to say, it should be TJ Halley. Uh, this guy, of course, like I said, just recently signing with Rise Nation for the World War II season. And trying to show off his boots on the ground skill. Didn't even turn on uh, Oracle. And you can see how fast of the reaction time that really was. Immediate two on two. TJ, going to quickly find that last player in the back. Shuts down at Nate Shot. And uh, JCap at the exact same time shuts down at Pharaoh. So TJ, very early rush. Finds Nate Shot in the back of spawn and picks him off for that first round. So, like I said, strong performance from TJ. Could see a victory, potentially, out of the side of World War II champs team. Going to continue on with TJ Halley heading into this next round. As we'll see what uh, what lane he's going to be pushing. Looks like he's going to be making his way here over toward that red side. As, of course, the A side. Higher profile one that you're going to be seeing hit quite often. Side of Hunted, though. Not at all strangers toward those offside hits. Quite a few times when you watch them play Fret, they do make that push toward underground. And it looks like uh, doing pretty well when it comes down to this current site hold. Two players already dropped from the side of World War II champs team. Slack thankfully able to at least find one of those kills to make the disadvantage a little bit easier on himself. Retrix drops. And Slack can't spot the other player just toward his right. Pharaoh picking him off. And uh, like I said, round now. Other way. Toward the side of Hunt. Up close fight with the Vector. Vector versus Remington. I would normally say at close range, I take the Vector every time. But I think at any gun engagement, whether you're holding a head glitch on one side with a Remington or a Vector, I think I might take the Vector in every single possible gunfight that, that can be imaginable, to be totally honest with you. Gun is absolutely insane. As we're going to see what Jake Cap can do with that exact same weapon, making his way here over toward that crate side. Potential push being watched from, the, I think that was uh, Pharaoh for a short time. Was trying to watch that cross, but now he's actually going to be player sitting inside the middle. Just as I switched his position, he ends up dropping. And that rally, currently sitting up top three, only has one more player left to try and find. And that one is going to be J-Cap. J-Cap shuts down, nade shot. One on two now, spots one player toward middle. Picks him off, and now rallied. I think jumps down, no, he actually stays in the same position. Tosses out that stun, and... We'll see how he wins to play this. Both players currently seeing a 4 and 1. And thankfully for JCap, he does have that bomb in hand. So, nothing to worry about when it comes down to that. It's just a matter of choosing what site. And hoping that the opposition does not choose correctly, or at least gets the correct line site. Because, of course, when you do plant that bomb, you do have a, a moment of uh, no really. Offense or defense, if you want to kind of call it that, to uh, to hold. And it looks like Jacob does spot Rally making his way toward bottom red. And Rally is going to advance here over toward this B side. And Jacob's trying to pick him off, trying to catch him off. And he will spot him from behind. Question is, which angle did he go to? Which angle did he find? It looks like Jacob will pick him off. So a smart play there from Jacob. Kind of halves the map in two. And he tries to come off toward mid map. Gets good timing and bolt missed. That could have gone Rally's way. Good reaction, but in the end, overall, smart play coming in from JCap as he will clutch out that one. Clinching at 5 and 1 is Mr. Kaplan. JCap 2 rings, hashtag. Maneu moving on with the other side, though, Pharaoh. Going to be the bomb carrier for this round number four. Let's have that thermal room. Now spots one player toward top three. Nice kill there found. Shuts that one off on slap. But Retrix is quick to do respond. And Retrix continuing to do a little Retrix things. Early rush. Finds two kills. I feel like every time we watch or aren't or I'm on board with Retrix, I feel like he's always finding kills in quick succession. And if you're new to search and destroy, that's not something that you see all too often. So as Blastful shuts down TJ Halley, it looks like the uh, man, man advantage not going to be going that way. As Retrix, if he does clutch this one out, it would be the ace. And it looks like Blastfall and Nade Shot. So they do not have that bomb in their hands. They're going to have to make their way back to potentially tr try and go and grab that one. And Retrix could get a nice line set, but just rounds the corner. I'm not sure if he ends up spawning them at any time. 
Looks like they're going to wrap back to go and grab that bomb. It will be Nate Shot who picks that up. And the question is, can you make it to B? Don't think it's going to be possible. So it looks like they're making a short rush here over toward A, but Retrick shuts down. Nate Shot realizes, hopefully, that the bomb is down, and looks like Blastful picks that one up quickly. He's able to get the plan off. He's going to be good. And now Retrix might think he's home free, but that's not actually the case. So here comes the wraparound, and Retrix just gets the worst timing ever. Can't round the corner, so I'm not exactly sure what the overall clutch was. But in the end, it's a victory in this round from the side of Hunnett. Unfortunate timing there from Retrix. Just doesn't check his right, doesn't think Blastful is going to go all the way around that corner. That's a pretty rough, I would say for my opinion, at least it's a pretty difficult or pretty risky Overall placement that Blastful ends up rotating back around. Doesn't exactly know where Retrix was. Of course, did realize that the gunfight goes down and Retrix has to be around the opposite area, but still. Let's see, this next round does take place. Of course, staying on board with Retrix for the time was making his way underground, and it looks like Farrell finding the first blood on TJ Halley. Just checking top red. Not going to see anyone for now. Just had to go and close that door and back up. We cut his losses. As he's going to try and cut down the opposition as much as he can before he might drop just from the side. Yeah, he's going to get picked off. Farrell. Extra shots. Tags him down. It looks like Retrix with a nice knife. Quickly does fall after the trade. Farrell finding a number of different kills. Looks like slacked. Would be good for him to get on the board. At least finds one second story. He's going to wrap back in here toward red spot. The feet of one player shuts down rallied as well. This would be a one on three. Nate shot now. Has to know his exact positioning. He knows he's in red. And thankfully for Nate shot, he is on the defensive end. So Slack quickly rotates back to go and grab that bomb. And he doesn't have a whole lot of time left. Tries to check as many angles as he can before he has to set that gun down. And he... Maybe he thinks he could have heard something, but now Nate Shot goes for the check and can Slack win this gunfight is the question. Spots Nate Shot out, and yes, just in the nick of time. Slack is able to pick off Nate Shot. And what seemed like a very risky play from Slack to hop off that bomb. Ends up working out in his way, and Nate Shot didn't have to check the bomb, but unfortunately, the play for Nate is, you know, do I wait and maybe let that bomb camp or that bomb planter get it get away? Or do I play the time and hope that he just couldn't get the bomb down fast enough? Or did exactly what Slack did in that last round, so risky play from Slack, but high risk, high reward. It'll work out regardless. That's going to be a one-round advantage right now for the World War II champs team. Shot being exchanged. Hit markers gained for Pharaoh right now. Currently sitting at 6-4. and four. I think a very strong performance in a lot of these matches that we've been able to at least spectate or cast over. It looks like a pretty passive round for the most part. Rally making a slight rush here over toward B. Not sure if he came underground or not, but firing some shots in toward red. More and more hit markers. However, not any kills. Just as I say, that Blastful finding a nice headshot on TJ. That player in red quickly gets shut down, so on offense, they at least do have a man advantage and you'd like to think that Slack could maybe hear that bomb plant going down at least he does get the indicator as of now Remington inside a fire how can he make it out and exactly he will not Pharaoh rallied both responding for a few and now Jcap left in a one on three scenario but no can't find that kill at least from my perspective it looks like rally gets a nice turn on but I'm not exactly sure if that was the case oh that's exactly the case that's exactly the case. I really hope Jake Cap was one shot there because I think he may have shot it with one bullet. I'm not sure though. I, I'm really not sure to be totally honest, but regardless, that hurts. That hurts to see. Either way, Jake Cap trying to lick his wounds and we'll see what he can do with that bomb now. Going to have the objective in his hands as he's had throughout most of the series. Going to close underground. It's Pharaoh from afar actually exchanging. I've never actually seen that line set be used from spawn, but looks like gunfight's going down. Remington from afar, and that's a lot of hit markers that <laughs> TJ Halley was having as uh, TJ Halley will walk away with a gunfight. That's actually crazy. So TJ Halley literally has 10 bullets left. And one gun. Picks up another off the ground. 
I mean, that's a glitch. I'm not even sure. Either way, TJ Halley watching third story right now. After winning a uh, very long and tedious gunfight versus Pharaoh, he's going to have to get another one, and he will get dropped. So, like I said, man, Vector versus Remington at that range. You almost can't not choose the Vector at some points. I mean, it looks like Blastful shuts down Retrix just like that. Jake Cap, back-to-back rounds. Left in a clutching situation. Last time it was a one on three. This time a one on two. Thankfully for him, the bomb's already down, and at least there's one less man. Regardless, Blastville picks up at least the final two kills. Shuts down one player from being up in top red and finishes off J-Cap in the end. So Blastful currently sitting at eight and four, having a pretty strong performance. Both Pharaoh and Rally both sitting at seven kills themselves, but Nate shot kind of in the back, currently sitting at two and five. And for the World War II champs team, four and six, both for TJ and Slack. By no means awful games. Of course, only just negative two for right now. We'll see how both Nade and uh, Slack and TJ can try to bring this one back. As TJ spots one crossing through middle as both him and Retrix find one. And of course, TJ, due to spawning that one player toward the right, will most likely have that line sight. And that's exactly what Slack is there to pick off. And now Pharaoh immediately left in a one on four scenario. Spots Retrix toward middle, but he's got a lot more to do. He's not able to do much more than that as he will quickly be picked off. TJ shutting him down with that vector. You gotta have a lot of confidence when it's a one on four scenario and you got a vector in your hand ready to get in a close quarter engaged with someone who has a thermal Remington. So now we're back to 4-4. Four, four. This is what I talked about. I said this, this third map, probably gonna see a round 10, round 11. Something along those lines. And we've at least been guaranteed a round eight, round nine. So with that, looks like we're going to see an underground push. Smoke's up for Pharaoh, trying to catch a somewhat of an early peek, and they might not be spawning anyone right now. Of course, they most likely hear that gate being opened, and here comes the smokes as well. Pharaoh's going to be the one toward the back. TJ gets dropped off there by Nate Shot. Stun's coming in through the smokes, and Jacob's just trying to wait it out until he can have all of his line sight back as he gets picked off as well. And now Slack, the last one alive. He's the only one who escapes to underground, and he just runs past one player, totally destroys Pharaoh. That was a beautiful shot there from Slack. That was crazy. Well, Slack, I promise your other gunfights should be easier than that. But still, you've got two more. Catching one from the back, it's get such bad timing, and he's going to get smarted out. Shots coming in from either Blastful or Rallied. This is not going to be an easy one for him to clutch. Firing some shots through both sides, and fortunately for him, he will get picked off. So Rally plays the angle correctly, checks both line sights, and has a teammate Blastful in the back to watch either one. As it's now going to be five rounds to four. Only one round away is Hunnett from advancing to the finals of the Ghost 44 s and Or can we see a round 11? Forced from the side of World War II champs team. We'll see how they play out this round. They're going to try and hop on board with their perspective throughout the entire thing. That's exactly the way that you do not want to start off a round on the brink of elimination. Is having a teammate be made for first blood. As TJ gets dropped. Jake Cap holding with that vector. Looks like one player toward that corner red. It's going to be Retrix. He quickly gets spotted out as well. And now J-Cap spawning a few players. Spots one. Takes out Pharaoh. He's going to need his teammate Slack to try and stay alive. But J-Cap needs to stay alive as, as, himself as well. He's making a decently aggressive rush at the moment. Slack currently lingering over toward A. And J-Cap, had he stayed pre-aiming toward that crate side, definitely could have found a kill. And there's one player going to be on the flank at the moment. Is J-Cap going to be... Having a nice responsive time, not going to happen. So Slack knows at least the angle or the idea of where one player could be. And he could have a nade potentially coming his way. No, it's actually going to be a smoke toward that plant. He's going to get sparted toward that player. Top three, red and rallied. It's going to shut down Slack. As that is not going to be a round 11 forced. However, it will be a round 10. A very close series toward the end as that will be a victory toward the side of Hunnett as they're going to advance themselves here toward the finals.